friends, my name is Sachin Tapaswi and I am from Pune, India. Today I will be discussing this patient who is a 19 year old girl. She injured her left knee during a game of soccer about 3 weeks ago and presented to me with a swollen knee with terminal stiffness of flexion and sensation of buckling and instability. On clinical examination, she had a grade 2 latchman test, she had a grade 2 pivot and medial joint line tenderness. Her x-rays did not reveal any abnormal findings. Her alignment was neutral. Her patella was tra tracking central on her skyline view and on the lateral view, the femur was well centered on the tibia. MR scan imaging of the coronal of the sagittal plane shows the presence of a peripheral longitudinal medial meniscus tear and an ACL rupture as is seen from this series. Axial plane imaging also demonstrates the presence of a peripheral longitudinal tear of the medial meniscus. So the plan for her was to do an arthroscopy, an ACL reconstruction using her ipsilateral hamstrings tendon and to perform a medial meniscus repair, preferably an all inside repair considering that the tear was in the posterior third. She was taken up for an arthroscopy, the ACL was ruptured, the tibial stump measured about 8 mm by 16 mm. Then the limb was brought into about 10 degrees short of extension and the tear could be palpated. It is important to open up the space of the medial compartment and hence pie crusting of the meniscotibial and the POL ligament area was carried out from an outside in fashion. By applying a sustained valgus force and doing pie crusting with an 18 gauge needle, one could open up the medial compartment in a sufficient manner so as to examine the tear and also to allow for introduction of instruments. Careful probe palpation confirmed the presence of a zone 1 tear which was running from the posterior horn to almost the posterior mid third junction. The tear appeared to be fresh with relatively good preserved anatomy and good meniscal tissue. Examination of the posterior middle recess did not reveal the presence of a ramp lesion. On measurement, the tear measured approximately around 18 millimeters in width. The tear was present on both the superior as well as the under surface of the meniscus. Next, careful augmentation of healing was done using mechanical methods. A diamond rasp is used to abrade the meniscal surfaces as well as abrade the synovium. This is essential to remove any granulation tissue and also freshen up the area and allow for a hypervascular response. This should also be carried out on the superior synovial surface of the meniscus. Augmentation of repairs is essential and the other technique to do is to do trephination using a microfracture awl or alternatively one may use a long inside out meniscus needle to create multiple trephinitions. Following biological augmentation, we now proceed to a proper repair. You need to select the correct trajectory and hence the portal was switched to allow for a direct trajectory from the anterolateral portal. So with the scope in the anteromedial portal, an adequate trajectory was determined from the anterolateral portal and hence the first all inside device was inserted from the anterolateral portal. A slotted cannula is brought inside the joint. This allows the all inside FASTFIX 360 device to slide in smoothly. The first deploy is on the superior side and then the second deploy is on the surface of the meniscus. 
what is important to understand is that with these fast fixed devices the T2 will move towards the T1 and hence it is important that we recognize the correct reduction capacity or capability while using this type of device. The knot is cinched and is cut. You will observe that by putting sutures on the superior surface of the meniscus, the meniscus will evert and this is of advantage to us because it exposes the under surface which will then allow a repair. Now the portal, viewing portal is switched to the anterolateral portal. A slotted cannula is brought through the anteromedial portal and the second fast fix device which is a curved fast fix 360 is now brought in. Again the first anchor is now fired in the body of the meniscus and the second bite is now taken at the superior meniscocapsular fragment. This superior meniscocapsular fragment is important to repair because you need to do alternating repairs on the top side and the bottom side. A hook probe is used to effectively guide the closure of the repair and by using a hook probe you can literally manipulate your meniscus reduction in exactly the manner that you wish to do. As you can see here the second suture now brings down the meniscus effectively and further tightening will lead to eversion of the tear at that exact site as what is desired. The knot is seated down on the meniscus and is cut with a slotted knot pusher knot cutter. Subsequently, a third suture is now passed and we choose to pass it on the under surface. The reverse curve ultra, sorry, the reverse curve fast fix 360 is chosen. Again, T1 will move towards T2. So we take the first purchase in the inferior leaf of the meniscus and the second purchase is taken at the inferior capsular area of the meniscus. Again careful cinching and tightening of the knot will allow you to reduce your meniscus extremely effectively and bring down the repair to the exact desired surface area. Again we use a slotted or cannulated knot pusher and knot cutter to take care of cinching of the knot dressing of the knot and cutting of the knot. It was observed that a third or a fourth suture was now desired at the level of the extreme posterior third. Again the slotted cannula has been brought in. The slotted cannula will allow you or prevent any hanging up of any adipose tissue as the meniscus repair device is brought inside. It also serves as a good reduction tool and may hold the meniscus tissue reduced as you pass in your sutures. As is observed, the fourth fast fix 360, which is again a reverse curved type of device, is passed at the extreme posterior horn and the knot is then tied down and cinched down effectively. It is important to do careful probing of the repair both on the superior and on the inferior aspect and then proceed to making your ACL reconstruction. The meniscus is important. It serves many important biomechanical functions. Load transmission is probably one of the more important roles which we need to look for in meniscal tissue. The meniscus roots help anchor the meniscus to the tibia and they convert axial load to circumferential hoop stresses. Traumatic tears are important because they occur in young athletically active individuals. These are often associated with ACL tears and usually are of the peripheral lontal morphological variety. These are amenable to repair 
and hence we do not leave any opportunity to repair such traumatic tears. Arnoxy and Warren way back almost about 40 years ago explained to us the vascularity of the meniscus in the peripheral third via the peripheral capillary plexus and hence we divide the meniscus into zones based on the vascular pattern. Zone 0 is the perimeniscal capillary plexus, zone 1 is the red zone, zone 2 is the red white zone and zone 3 is the white zone. Zone 0, zone 1 and some zone 2 repairs render themselves amenable for surgical repair. As was demonstrated in the video, all menisci should be repaired by vertical mattress sutures and it is important to alternate them on a superior and an inferior location using divergent suture configuration either with an all inside device as demonstrated or by using an inside out or an outside in technique as well. The meniscus is composed of maximal circumferential fibers and hence vertical mattress suture configurations are able to hold them securely in the best possible manner. Although we are well aware that the all inside technique is reserved for the posterior third location tears on the medial and the lateral side, you will find that the newer all inside devices which are more flexible actually increase or expand that zone of repairability to include more of the posterior mid third zonal junction areas as well. So to conclude the all inside meniscus repair is a very secure and reliable method of meniscus fixation. It allows consistent repair with good strength characteristics.